Okay, just a short little video talking about these sources of variation when it comes to sexually reproducing organisms, but also for asexually re reproducing organisms, how can they actually change over time? Especially if we're talking about a mechanism for evolution and natural selection. So previously, uh, we've learned that you know natural selection can happen, but in order for natural selection to happen, there have to be certain things that are going on. For example, more offspring than the environment can support. So there has to be a struggle for survival and there has to be different genes so that the best adapted that have these genes that are more well adapted to the environment will actually be passed on. So where do all these different types of genes that produce the different variations actually come from? And so that's what this video is about a little bit. So we're just talking about how we can get different types of variations. So looking at these three diagrams here, you can probably get an idea already. So one is mutations and mutations uh, you should have talked about or learned about extensively before are just when some of these letters here encoded in the DNA. So here's one half of DNA strand. This is in the mid middle of a transcription going on where some of these letters can just get replaced by another. And replacing some of those letters can mean that you end up with new amino acids being coded for, which means the polypeptide or the protein coded for by the gene actually can produce a different combination or a different protein. And that protein could lead to a different type of trait. So that's where the mutation can actually happen. Now, mutations are especially important for asexual reproducing organisms because it's one of the only ways that you get variation from them. For sexually reproducing things, we obviously have uh, meiosis. So in sexual reproduction, in the production of gametes, of sperm and egg cells, the whole process of creating sperm cells and egg cells involves all kinds of uh, bits and pieces that allow you to create new combinations. One of those is crossing over, which is illustrated here. Crossing over happens in prophase one of meiosis. You should be familiar with meiosis already. Another way is independent orientation. So that happens in metaphase one. So how the actual chromosomes, homologous chromosomes line up on the equator can also produce new uh, variants, new variations. And uh, when you learn about that, this number should look familiar to you. Uh, it's two to the power of 23, which is the number of different combinations you can get just from independent orientation or independent assortment or random assortment, different things, different ways that uh, that particular process is called. So crossing over, prophase one, independent orientation from metaphase one, and that's how meiosis contributes to uh, source of variation. So we've got mutations, we've got meiosis, and then finally the act of sexual reproduction by itself just from the act of random fertilization. So you have an egg cell here being corded by multiple different sperm cells up to several hundred million in one go and only one of these will be the winner and that whole act there like a lottery if this bad boy right here wins in the end we give him a little crown and a smiley face and if this one wins well that's a bit of a random process as well too and so that's another source of variation so how does evolution work work through the process of natural selection you need to have variation and that variation will create certain genes that allow for better fitness according to a given environment. So just a really short video on sources of variation.